The classic way to represent a tree is a class tree that contains a node's attributes plus pointers that point to its children. But is it the only way to do so? Can we represent a tree with an array for example, or another structure? This is what we will discuss in this video. A tree is just an entity that has some other trees as its children, which also recursively have other trees as their children, and so on. And this definition says nothing about how to implement it, is the reason why we may have multiple ways to do so. It's what makes a tree an ADT, abstract data type. An ADT is a data type that is defined by a set of values and a set of operations, but doesn't mention how to implement them. Basically, you know what it can do, but not how. Which is the case with a tree. And to actually implement a tree, a binary one for example, we can use a class tree that has a value, a pointer left that points to its left child, and a pointer right that points to its right child. But it's not the only way. We can also for example use a hash table with three key value pairs. The first key is data, its value is whatever data that we want to store in the node, and the two other keys are left and right, host the value is another hash table that contains three key value pairs. Remember that a tree is recursive. Or we can use a tuple, a tuple of three elements, where the first element is the data of the node and the two other elements are its left and right children, which are also tuples of three elements. Or we can use a matrix of n rows and three columns, where the index of a row is the id of that node, the first column contains the data, the second column contains the id of the left child, and the third column contains the id of the right child. For example, here 2 means that the right child of node 0 is node 2, and minus 1 means that it doesn't have that child. Or we can use an array where each element represents a node, and to calculate the position of left and right children, we use the index. For the node at index i, its left child is at index 2i plus 1, and its right child is at index 2i plus 2. For example, if we take node at index 0, its left child is at index 2 times 0 plus 1, which is 1, and right child 2 times 0 plus 2, which is 2. Then for node at index 1, left child is at 2 times 1 plus 1, which is 3, right child at 2 times 1 plus 2, which is 4, and so on. And you can see that this array plus this way of linking nodes forms a tree. So yes, we can represent a tree with an array. Basically, we can represent a tree with many ways. We just need to represent elements and a way to find the parent-child relationship. Here we use arithmetic. Now you may think, okay good, we can represent a tree with an array, but is it actually used somewhere or is it just something good to know? The answer is that it's actually used. We can take as an example the binary heap that we covered in a previous video, you should watch it by the way. Remember that we presented the heap with an array with the same way of finding the left and right children. It's a very common implementation. But why? Why would we represent a tree with an array? One of the main reasons is space efficiency. Let's make a quick comparison. With the usual representation of a node, we have a whole object plus two pointers left and right. With an array representation, we only need one array element to represent a node. No object, no left and right pointers, which is way more space efficient. Well, then if using an array seems better, why isn't it the standard implementation of a tree? Let me show you why. Let's take this tree. The root is always at index 0. Then the right child is at index 2i plus 2, which is 2 for the root. So this node must be at index 2. Then its right child must be at index 2 times 2 plus 2, which is 6. Then its right child must be at index 2 times 6 plus 2, which is 14. And it continues like that. The last node must be at index 62, so we need an array of 63 elements to represent this tree of 6 nodes only. The reason behind it is that in a level of the tree, we cannot skip null elements. We have to maintain them to get the right children when calculating 2i plus 1 and 2i plus 2. The consequence of that is that with a tree of n nodes, in the worst case, we need an array of 2 power n minus 1 elements, which is very inefficient in terms of space. But what about the best case? The best case is when the tree is complete. A binary tree is complete when all of its levels are full, except maybe the last one where nodes should be as far left as possible. 
which is the case for a binary heap for example. In this case, we need an array of n elements only, we have no null values that will increase the size of the array uselessly. This is why a binary heap is often represented with an array, we have the advantage of not having to store the pointers and all that stuff, and we don't have the inconvenience of needing a large array. We deduce that we should use an array when the height is relatively small compared to the number of nodes, when it's an off log n, like with a complete tree. Ok, but what's the point of this video? The point is to know that data structures you're learning about can have different implementations. Knowing them with their pros and cons is important, to be able to make a decision once you need the structure in your project. Also, I wanted to tell you that these structures can appear in different ways in problems. You should be able to notice them, which requires a good understanding of the structure itself. For example, in the open the lock problem, we have a lock with four circular wheels that we can rotate in both ways. And we have some dead ends, states where the wheels stop turning and the lock can't be open. The goal is to find the smallest number of moves to go from 0000, 0, 0, 0 to a target. For example, we have target being 0202 and these dead ends. The minimum number of moves is 6. 0000, 0, 0, 0, then 1000, 0, 0, then 1100, 0, 0, then 1200, 0, 0, then 1201, then 1202, then 0202. What if I tell you that there is a graph hidden here? Yes, there is a graph. Vertices represent different states, and an edge between two states means that we can go from one to the other. For example, with 0000, 0, 0, 0, we have 8 possible moves. Rotate to the front or to the back each one of the four wheels. We can go to 1000, 9000, 0100, 0100, 0100, 0010, 0010, 0010, 0010, 0009, and 0009. We do the same thing with other states, and now we have a graph where we can move between possible states. We just apply breadth first search to go from 0000 to the target while avoiding dead ends. And the thing is that we don't need to build the graph, we just need to find where our vertices and how to find neighbors of a vertex. In this case, a vertex is a string of length 4 that represents a state, and to find neighbors, we perform the 8 moves to find the 8 neighbors. We reached the end of this video, I hope that you learned more about data structures, if it's the case, let me know with a comment. If you enjoyed, like and subscribe to the channel, see you in the next one.